curious tale that threaded through the town, through graying women sewing on the ease. Yes, 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 yes. That is Lelou Gadu by Derek Walcott. It's a great poem, lovely writing. I can't wait to dive straight into it. For notes on this poem and all other poems appearing on the syllabus, be sure to check out my friend Antoinette Blair from Jamaica. She's doing an excellent job on her website. I'll link that in the description for you. Go ahead and check that out. Definitely would love to have your presence there. Read all you can, subscribe if you want to, and have fun with preparing for the literature exam. So let's go straight into Le Lugaru now. Le Lugaru by Derek Walcott. A curious tale that threaded through the town, through graying women sewing on their ease, was how his greed had brought old Lebron down. Greeted by slowly shutting jealousies when he approached them, in white linen suit, pink glasses, cork hat, and tap-tapping cane, a dying man licensed to sell sick fruit, ruined by fiends with whom he had made a bargain. It seems one night these Christian witches said, he changed himself to an Alsatian hound, a slivering lycanthrope hot on a scent. But his own watchman dealt the thing a wound, which howled and lugged its entrails, trailing wet with blood, back to its doorstep, almost dead. So, reviewing Le Lugaru by Derek Walcott, we know that Le Lugaru is a sonnet. A sonnet is a 14-line poem that basically expresses a thought or an idea. Uh, many years ago, poets wrote sonnets to talk about the love for a woman or for nature or so, things of that sort. But here we see a brilliant idea by Derek, if I'm to call him by his first name, that encapsulates the Caribbean experience. When I say Caribbean experience, I mean exactly what goes on in our towns and our cities, uh, particularly our villages. I don't want to dwell too much on that because you will hear much more about it when we actually get into the actual poem. But going, going back to the sonnet, a sonnet is a 14 line poem. It's 14 iambic pentameter lines and they rhyme periodically. I'll talk to you a bit, bit more about that in a few. But they rhyme periodically. So you see in the first line, at the end of the first line, the word tongue is there. Tongue rhymes with not ease, but tongue rhymes with down. So you see a trend. Ease rhyme with jealousies. Suit rhyme with fruit. Cane rhyme with bargain. That's how the iambic pentameter lines work. I'll go ahead and have your teachers explain more about that for you. It doesn't require to know much about it because it would not be tested in, this, in the exam. But that's generally it. Just for English purposes, you know that they're good for you. So the first eight lines of the poem is called the octave, while the last six are called the sestec. So the sestec is the last six lines and the octave, the first eight. Uh, so in the first eight, we're going to look at the octave now, and then we look at the sestet, and then we'll have an understanding of what the entire poem is about together. So, Le Lugaru, a curious tale that threaded through the town, and we can start that first line there by seeing a repetition of that T sound, tale that threaded through uh, the town, lots of T's, uh, that's of course alliteration, uh, repetition of that consonant sound, uh, consonant sound, and now we can get the idea there that this tale, this we this thing that we don't quite know much about, we gather that from the word curious, treads through the tongue. What does that mean? If we think about a garment, we know that a tread in a garment is going on forever. It's like something that's going like throughout, spread throughout, throughout the garment. So similarly here, the tail is going through the tongue. The tail is spread like wildfire throughout the tongue. 
through growing women sewing on the ease. Now, this part here is just funny. It's quite true because uh, many old people, uh, if you're if you're aged and you're listening to this, my humblest of apologies, <laughs> but predominantly old Caribbean people talk name <laughs> to say the least they don't have much to do so what they do they call up each other auntie shirley girl you hear what happened and they talk name right so this here is really caribbean experience it's telling you what happened so these women who were obviously old graying women sewing on these so they were under the shed or under the roof of their homes and what were they doing they were busy talking about this guy this old man Lee Brown I am going to suppose that probably somebody liked Lee Brown amongst them but probably Lee Brown didn't want to give them a chance in young days so they're paying back now like they talking about him so because they couldn't get him <laughs> That's my supposition there. Don't don't quote me on that. Please don't quote me on that. So what is, what are they doing? So these women are talking about how the greed, they're saying that he was greedy. As a result of his greed, that is the reason why he is, he is what he is now. That is what they're saying. So I know Guyanese, it's a Guyanese statement when people say, um, if they can't beat you what they do, talk your name. <laughs> This is pretty much what they're doing to Lee Brown. So probably Lee Brown was all by himself. And these women, probably because they didn't associate with them, what are they doing? They're talking about him. An innocent man who is just trying to probably go by life or to live his life, to live the days he has remaining, trying to be humble, trying to be peaceful. And here these old women are trying to destroy him. He goes on to say, greeted by slowly shutting jealousies when he approached them. Uh, that there tells you when the, when the guy meets them, they appear to be, you know, innocent. They appear to be friendly, but obviously they are jealous of him. Obviously they are intimidated by him. Obviously they don't really want to be there they don't want to talk to him but that's how they appear and i'm gonna gather this part here white linen suits pink glasses cork hat top topping cane to mean two things one they're probably talking about lebron himself and um, taking that white hat white linen suits that tells me that mm, white probably was like was um important when he was younger um, can all, I can also take the pink hat, pink glasses, cork hat, tap, tap, tapping cane to mean that the old women, if that's how they're describing the old women there, these words pink, uh, cork hat, white linen suit, it appears to mean, it appears to me that these women were, the, the picture was trying to be painted that they're supposed to be innocent white we think we when we associate white and pink with purity so these women should be innocent should be pure should be nice should be humble but yet they're being ironic yet they're being totally unorthodox a cork hat that cork hat part and what comes to my mind when i hear cork hat is thinking about um sabrina the teenage witch i don't know many of you saw that um, cartoon many many years ago you think about a witch when you see a cork hat or you think of a cork hat so it's brilliantly putting in there a description that makes us want to say who is he talking about with cork hat who has this cork hat is it lee brown himself or is it the women I am supposing that's to the women and he's trying to hint to us that yet they appear innocent yet they appear pure they might be somewhat of the devil that is what I'm taking that to mean tap tapping key and of course you know that's an onomatopoeia a statement that that hints the sound something makes by just using the word a dying man licensed to sell sick fruit so what are they talking about? They're talking this man name. They're gossiping about this man. What are they talking about? They're saying that this man is dying. <laughs> you see the thing about gossips. 
not only are gossips untrue, but gossips can cost your, you your entire life. So they're saying this man is dying. They're saying he's selling sick fruit. They say he was ruined by fiends with whom he had made a bargain. Now fiends mean he's saying that you're free friends with the devil or he made a pact with the devil. And as a result of that pact, he was ruined or he was brought down to his knees. Interesting. So the Sestet uh, talks about the final six lines of the poem. Here, I think it's just beautifully written. I think it talks in depth of what the, the lies were that these old women were spreading about Lee Brown. So they say, it seems one night these Christian witches said, and Christian witches, I try to bowl that there so you could see it, because it's a beautiful oxymoron. I, I can't ever remember seeing such a, a wonderful oxymoron in any literature piece in the Caribbean work, but this here is just beautiful. Christian witches. Now, oxymoron is when two contradictory statements are placed alongside each other. A Christian is supposed to be someone who is godly, church-going, God-fearful, uh, respectful of people and so on. And which is supposed to be the total opposite of Christian. And those two are placed so close together like they're saying they are the same. And that is what makes it an, an oxymoron. So. Which, of course, we know means something evil, something that's a friend of the devil, uh, spells, and so on. And those two are placed together there, so that's an oxymoron. The word oxymoron, you should know as well, is itself an oxymoron. Uh, oxy means sharp, moron obviously means dull, put that together is sharp, dull, so that's itself an oxymoron. You remember that there to remember what oxymorons are. So he changed himself to an Alsatian hound. They're saying he, cha he had the ability, these women are saying that Lee Brown had the ability to become a werewolf. And one night this werewolf was going out hunting and werewolf feed on blood, right? Yeah, I would think so. And obviously the blood he's going to feed on would be people. So they're saying that mm, he was a person who had capabilities of becoming an animal and he went hunting one night and then they go on to say that his own watchman dealt the thing a wound and that's ironic because own watchman a watchman should be watching out for you right what they're saying the own watchman dealt the thing a wound meaning the person who was supposed to be his friend or the person who he made the business deal with that's what these women are saying these women are saying that this man here lee brown might have been important and then he made a pact to a pact with the devil uh, as a result of that pact he became ruined because the person he made the, gr the agreement with the watchman, what they're describing it here as, ruined him by dealing, by, by dealing him a wound. And after being hit, they're, they're using that there to, sh to hint to you that the business transaction went bad. So dealt the thing a wound is telling us that the business transaction, whatever the, the businessman was doing, whatever Lebron was doing, the transaction went bad, and as a result, he was damaged. So he pre hinting to us that this Lebron was very successful in his time, but because he went into business with the wrong company, the company made him, not literally a company, but people then. He went into business with the wrong kind of people, and those people dealt him blows, and the blows made him become a pauper, uh, or you say poor, or a failure then, in, in his business transaction or in his business life. As a result, he suffered a misfortune, and... What happened? He howled and logged his entrails, trailing wet with blood back to his doorstep, so almost dead. So they're, they're telling us here, hinting to us that how that business transaction went sour. They're hinting to us that perhaps 
when he was dealt a wound, when he was dealt a bad transaction, when he was dealt a bad experience, it hurt him in this way that he had to now rethink his entire life. And it was as though he was dying. So again, all of this here is gossip. We don't know this for a fact. We don't want to believe this but this is just what the old women are talking about an innocent man lee brown i often make jokes with my students and tell them it's powerful to see what a gossip can do and to also tell them that women dangerous <laughs> i'm just joking here but yeah it's telling us recapping the entire thing it's telling us that some man that obviously might have been important in his time is now poor all because he might have had some bad experiences with the devil and of course all of this is a gossip by women who had nothing else to do than to sit and talk people's name and this innocent man who happened to be a victim of this gossip might have ruined his entire life they talked about him being or him having the ability to oh no they talked about him being sick and they also hinted that he had the ability to sell sick fruit and that fruit there we might want to take it literally but it's really talking about the figurative fruit the fruit of our labor so they're saying that he was working and while he worked the f the work that he was doing was nonsensical the work that he was doing was pointless so they're attacking their the fruit of his labor they're saying the hard work that he's doing he's not seeing his way for as a result of that hard work so that contradicts everything there the power of a gossip that's all i can say the power of a gossip so let me tell you this poem lelugaru by derek walcott is not in the current syllabus it is not in 2018 to 2023 english syllabus but halfway through this then is when i realized that my humblest apologies i will place it separately from the original from the other poems in the syllabus so not to worry if you're listening to this probably you have a home assignment or something from your teacher but it's good to listen to poetry poetry i would always often say is the key to the soul or the key to unlocking one's soul so it's never too bad having experiences with many poems you go ahead so you can compare this poem with the themes supernatural uh, gossip folklore anything that you want to ex you can actually see in the poem anything your teacher might have also told you should it appear in the next syllabus Today is the 7th day of June 2017. You were with me, Jamin Hatton, and that is the end of this Lelugaru by Derek Walcott review. Go ahead and like this, comment, tell me what you want me to do next, subscribe so you can get updates on those future poems, and thank you very much for being with me. Until next time, goodbye.